whenever I wake up, I just like contemplate so many things. But, morning guys. I decided to vlog today just because I don't know, I kind of feel like it and I'm not gonna be able to vlog for three months about, maybe like two months. I'm not gonna be able to vlog on this channel but I'll be vlogging on my personal channel, um, documenting my like jaw surgery procedure which is gonna happen in March. So if you wanna like still see live videos from me, make sure you subscribe to my personal channel, Kai Abdul. Yeah, but I'm gonna vlog today. I am really exhausted because I actually worked this weekend and I should have vlogged this weekend to show like what that's like. But now my phone goes off, my work phone goes off and like I automatically have PTSD because I'm like, oh God, is someone asking me for something? And people email all like all the time. Weekends, it doesn't freaking matter. But I got comments back on a document last night and I was supposed to circulate it last night, but I did it this morning. So I woke up at five. 30 started working on it and then i just sent it off so it took me about an hour and a half two hours to address all the comments in both documents it's so annoying though because oh sometimes i just really hate multiple review cycles of things because like everyone writes so differently and then with multiple people reviewing stuff stuff gets deleted stuff gets misreferenced and it's just annoying because you have to consistently keep fixing the issue so actually what i want to do in my vlogs now at least for the next like month or two is any comments you guys leave me in the comment section i'm gonna make that like include one or two questions and make sure i answer it throughout my day vlog i've been getting asked a lot of questions about how to be like an independent consultant and crazy enough my friend texted me this morning she's a senior director or an executive director of clinical operations she texted me this morning and said want a job <laughs> obviously like not a like full-time job but um like a, a side contractor independent contract to help with a few projects so i'm going to talk to her about that later today you guys will hear me talk about it and then i'll talk more about like working a full-time job and then having contracts on the side and like how that works with employers and stuff so all right i'm gonna get up now honestly i took a really long time to get ready today longer than normal it's 10 30 but i also stayed in bed until like nine I feel like a high school kid sometimes with these braces, but I laid in bed and I was trying to go back to sleep because I'm tired, but my phone kept going off with different emails. And it's been like that honestly for the past like seven months. I feel like I now have PTSD when I hear that sound. I'm like, like where's my phone kind of thing. Yes, it's uh, very interesting. So today, I'm actually, I'm about to go get some coffee actually, that's what I wanna do. I'm trying to figure out where I wanna go. There's this new place that I just discovered, no, not new, but there's this place I discovered called Dinosaur Coffee on Sunset near my house. So I'm thinking I'm gonna pop in there and I don't have any other emails right now. So I'm somewhat free. I should open these blinds and let some sun. It's kinda cool outside it's kind of cold so i feel like as i've gotten into my 20s i talk to my mom more and more like i literally talk to her every single day about just about everything but i just went and got my coffee my emails are they're cooling down it's a little bit lighter today than it normally is we're nearing the end of a project which i feel like i've said a million times all right i'm gonna go home now i already got my coffee from this place called Silverback Coffee of Rwanda. It's really good, actually. I normally brew it at my house, but sometimes I just don't feel like brewing at all. And like having it in the cup. Oh my God, this is so good. Look, oat milk honey latte, cafe au lait with honey, which is basically just a drip coffee with oat milk. Amazing. Best drinks you'll ever order. If you are a coffee person, you should get those things. But I'm gonna go to my house now and probably just like go through my emails. I have like 256 emails that I have not gone through. And I don't know, I feel like I've gotten really good about not taking things personally at work. And I know in most of my videos, I've been talking about this a lot lately, saying like if you're working in regulatory and you're starting to have the opportunity to write documents, don't take it personally. And I, I think like in life in general, you just shouldn't take too many things at work personally because you don't know if you're a director, 
your VP, whoever you're reporting to, is getting chewed out by the CEO or the board of directors or other people in the organization to deliver and what you're writing is not at the level of your director or whatever. It literally has nothing to do with you. And I just wanna keep reinforcing that in my videos because I'm starting to realize how much I wish someone had told me that earlier in my career because I feel like in my earlier career opportunities, it's not that I ever really internalized things, it's just that like it can be difficult not to deal with the, uh, not to get reinforcement, but I had developed thick skin, so. Plus I'm Nigerian, so a lot of things don't really phase me. This is so good. What I've done today is I woke up at five. I worked on two documents. One of those documents is called a reviewer's guide. I think I mentioned this in a previous conversation. Normally you'll place the reviewer's guide in the ECTD section 1.2 with the cover letter. And it's essentially accompanies a really large, massive submission. It normally encompasses like a really large submission and it basically just helps the reviewers facilitate the content that you're providing to make it easier for them to facilitate their review. Because essentially when the submission goes to the FDA, the project manager is gonna check off all the boxes of the things that they need for it to be reviewable. And the reviewer's guide makes it like that much easier. So it's normally anywhere between like 10 to 13, 14 pages. It could be smaller just depending on what you're providing and like how specific you wanna be, how much detail you wanna provide. There will be a lot of over a lot sometimes in the cover letter and the reviewer's guide, but it just depends. Anyway, one question I've been getting a lot in the comments is like, how do you become an independent consultant in regulatory affairs? And honestly, don't rush into becoming an independent consultant because if you don't know what you're talking about or if you don't know regulatory or it's not even even about knowing everything in regulatory it's about feeling confident in regulatory affairs so if you don't feel confident in regulatory yet it's not time for you to become an independent consultant and the downside also to being an independent consultant is you get no insurance like you have to get insurance for yourself you get no benefits you get no equity you get nothing all you get is a check or your hourly rate so normally people will have their full time job and do like an independent consulting job if it doesn't compete with their full-time job so that's those are a few caveats but how you become an independent consultant is you build your network you start to make friends in regulatory so that when your friends go to different places they start to think of you like hey I remember I work with this person or I have this friend who's really who's a really great regulatory person or a really great clean ops person that can help support this application process for us I want to bring them on the project so I think becoming an independent consultant and building a name for yourself really starts in being in regulatory and and creating a name for yourself so i know at least six people from different companies that i've worked at that if they had a project because they moved to a different company or they needed support on something they would definitely message me or send me a text or call me and say hey i have this project i don't know if you have the bandwidth but i think it would be great for you great experience we can bring you on as an independent um, contractor that's basically what happened to me this morning my friend messaged me and said that they're working on a project and they think that i would be able to offer support for whatever they're working on it can be difficult if you have a full-time job that doesn't allow for you to work independent contracts or even offer regulatory support to friends like if you work for a cro i highly doubt and i and i actually guarantee that they make you sign a non-compete clause and i highly doubt they would ever allow you to independently consult because what you should be doing or what they want you to do is bring that potential client in-house so that they can get the money essentially <laughs> yeah so for my situation it's always it's always been like i had contracts in many consulting jobs when i had left my last job so it's a li it's a little bit different but i do have colleagues and friends who like had their full-time jobs and they also have like independent contracts that they work on the weekends or like after hours from work to like supplement their income or their money and their jobs have no issues with it or some of the people don't even tell their jobs but how you become an independent consultant is really just building a network for yourself it starts from building your network in addition to building your network linkedin is also a great tool i've had people reach out to me on linkedin from different companies saying i don't know if you're interested in being a consult a consultant to our company but we need help with x y and z we see on your linkedin profile that you specialize in rare disease regenerative medicine cellular therapy oncology hemocology whatever my therapeutic areas are and then we go from there and, and facilitate our relationship that way but i definitely think that linkedin and just building a name for yourself by working consistently and frequently in regulatory is how 
you're gonna be able to come and become an independent consultant. I think it's feasible and possible to branch out and work independently after about like two, three years. People always think that to, to be a consultant, you have to be like an executive director or an SVP. You gotta know everything. Not really, because what happens with these contracts as well that people get, when someone comes to you and says, we want to offer you a contract, they can either offer you a, a W-2 or they can 1099 you. And if they 1099 you, you're, you're an independent contractor working for yourself under your own name. And they just don't take out taxes. That's basically it. So even then, when you get contracts or when people are offering you contracts on LinkedIn, that's just literally another way, being an independent contractor. And from that, you can also build a name for yourself because they may extend your contract through your name. And then they might ask you, do you have anybody else who can work? And then you can bring other independent consultants to work on under you to go to that client and then once you leave that client you go and take another contract and then you take another contract and then you build your own infrastructure your own independent consultant firm that way of course this takes years and a lot of hard work but I'm giving you the general keys the general foundation it's really just important that you brace yourself and take your time I know a lot of you are really really eager and I was eager too to become an independent consultant but it's a lot of work you also you just need to consider your financial situation you need to consider your health situation like if you have any procedures coming up or you need like good insurance for some reason being an independent consultant contractor is not it because for those reasons unless you have a spouse that um, has insurance that you could be a part of but those are just some things to consider I feel like I just rambled per usual it's nothing but a chit chat session with you guys and I love it <laughs> that's pretty much it like I don't know if you have any other specific questions but it's not impossible to become an independent consultant you can independently consult in anything when you guys go on my website and you book for your resume to be redone or you book for a one-hour consultation for me consultation to talk with me about regulatory affairs or public health or your career or anything that's me independently consulting and it's nothing more than me having a YouTube channel and a website so it's definitely possible for you to branch into the independent consultant regulatory world the other last thing I want to mention about this is that you can become also a consultant for different companies like I know consulting firms that are looking for regulatory people at all levels from associate reg ops publishing all the way up until SVP executive director and you would work under their consulting firm to their client so that's another way you can do it you know starting with a firm and then eventually branching out and doing your own thing and the criteria for that is just having like general experience like when I first started working for a consulting firm I had just got my MPH and I probably had about two and a half three years of regulatory experience four years of pharma, like actually like five years of pharmaceutical experience. So yeah, I would say the two, three year mark is really the sweet spot to branch into consulting. And then eventually if you really like it, you can become an independent consultant. I think that's enough. I'm gonna answer my emails now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. Been sitting here for a few hours but for the rest of the day i'm just gonna go through all my emails i have a thousand sitting in my inbox and the way i organize my inbox is if it's sitting in my inbox and not in a folder i've categorized that means it's an action item so presently it feels like i have literally a thousand things to do i don't i probably have maybe like a hundred probably 10% like 90% of these things I've addressed yeah that's one thing that really helps me so I'm gonna do that for the rest of the day and that's pretty much it it's gonna be a really chill day today but per usual you already know what I'm gonna say make sure you order my book the prepared graduate and when you get it off of Amazon all the links are in the description box but when you get it off of Amazon make sure you leave a review make sure you leave a review and I'm thinking about writing other books and I'm trying to figure out what I want to focus on or like what my next topic will be so you know your your guys's comments are things that spark ideas so don't forget to engage in the comments and subscribe to my channel but until my next vlog guys bye